everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing you will need to do is download the color palette, the special brush with our pattern on it, and the font that I'm using today so that you can use all those same things to complete your drawing. So I know it's kind of a lot more than usual, but it's all free to download. It's linked in the description below. For the color palette, you will just double tap the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop into Procreate for you to use the same colors as you follow along with the drawing today. And then for the font, you will need to go into Procreate, add a layer of text, double tap it and click to open up this library and then click import font at the top here. For the brush, you will do a similar thing. Open up your brush menu and then click this plus icon and then click import and it will help. And then you can go find your brush that you downloaded. So that is how you will get everything into Procreate so that you can get started. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile and layers needed on the screen so that you can use that to get your canvas set up. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we'll get started. Okay, just a quick note before we get started. I did change up the color palette a little bit partway through the drawing. So the first color palette that you see here should be the one that you downloaded. It should have six total colors, two on each row. But you will see other parts of the video where the color palette looks different. But just follow along with the prompts, you know, the first color on the second row or the second color on the second row. And I promise you will be using the correct colors for the drawings. Okay, here is the color palette that we're working with today. So the first thing that we're going to do is just set our background color. So we will do that right from the layer menu here. Open that up. Click on the background color layer at the very bottom and click this first color on the first row of our color palette to set our background to that color. And then we're going to jump right into adding our text since that's going to be the main part of our picture. So we are going to go to the gear icon under add, click to add text. It should already be highlighted and it's probably this cream color. So with it highlighted, go to your color palette and select the first color on the second row to turn it to the yellow color. Then go back to our text, double tap it again to open up our menu so we can click our keyboard. And we are going to turn on caps lock and do H A P return P Y F return A L L. So three lines of three letters, that's how we're laying this out. Since we want it to say happy fall, we are going to change the word fall to orange so that it stands out a little bit more. So I am going to double tap on this last line to, to highlight it, the A-L-L. Go to my color palette and select the first color on the last row, the orange. Go back to my text. And just select the F, so I double tap to select this second middle row and then drag this bar to the right so that just the F is selected. And again, grab our first color on the third row to fill in that, that letter. So now we're going to triple tap to highlight the entire thing. Click on this font to open up our font menu. And we are going to make some adjustments. So first, let's just kind of widen this border for our text here. And then you are going to find the font that you should have downloaded, this Made Tommy Soft font, just the bold one. And then we'll start increasing the size and everything. So we'll increase the size, we'll decrease the leading so that we have less room in between our lines. And we'll increase the tracking so that our letters are spaced out nicely. So something about like this, I have my size at about 200, my tracking at about 25, and my leading at negative 50. So we are going to go with that for now. 
Let's grab our arrow tool to select our, all of our text. Under the snapping menu, make sure the snapping is turned on. And we are going to drag it to the center of our screen where we see both yellow lines pop up. So as you can see though, in our box here, there's about an equal amount on the top and bottom between the edge of our box and our letters. But on the left here, as you can see, there's more space in between the, the left edge of the box and the P and the left edge of the box and the A. And there's a lot of extra space on the right side here, but it's using the box to center. So it does still look a little off center, but we are going to fix that. So in order to do so, we are going to grab our selection tool, set it to freehand. We are going to select around the P, the F, and the L. And we're going to then click the arrow tool. It'll say your text layers are rasterized since we're making some adjustments here. But we are going to turn on magnetics also in the bottom left. And we are going to slide these to the right, keeping them in line until there's about an equal distance between on this right side as there is on the left side by the H here, about the same distance from the edge of our canvas there. Okay, and then even in my little selection here, you can see that the F and the L are closer to our border. The P is a little further away, so these are even a little off center from each other. So I'm going to turn that selection off, click it again, so that I can make a new selection around just the F and the L arrow tool again and drag it to the right just a little bit to kind of line them up a little bit better with our P at the top. Okay, so now there is an uneven distance in between our H our, and our A and our A and our P. So we are going to grab our selection tool and select this entire middle area with the A, Y, and the L. Click the arrow tool and drag that to the right, keeping it in line. And as you can see here with snapping turned on, it kind of snaps us to the center yellow line. That's probably what we want. So let's leave it there. But again, as you can see, the A and the Y are pretty close in terms of distance, but the L is a lot more space on the left than on the right of our border. So we are going to turn our selection off, turn it back on and grab just the L and move that to the left a little bit until it also hits our middle yellow line there so it's lined up nicely with our other letters. And lastly, we need to move the P and the A. So let's grab our selection tool and select around both of them. Click the arrow tool and we're going to move it to the left until it lines up nicely with this left side of our H here, like so. However, again, now you can see the P is a little off center. So we are going to grab just the P and move it to the right just a little bit like so. So everything should look pretty nicely spaced out now. So now that everything's in its right spot, I am going to click the arrow tool on uniform to select my whole layer. And I am just going to increase the size just a little bit more like so and recenter it on our two yellow lines here. So now we're going to make the second layer of text behind this that's a darker color that's going to make our letters look like 3D blocks. So to do that, we're going to go to the layer menu, duplicate this layer with our text on it. On the bottom one, select that. And we are first going to grab the second color on the second row next to our bright yellow color. And we are going to drag and drop this onto each yellow letter. You won't see it because it's behind our front layer that has our lighter yellow on it. So I did the whole happy. Then we will grab the second color on the last row and do the orange letters, drag and drop to fill those in like so. Click the arrow tool and we are just going to move the whole layer down and to the right just a little bit like so, so that we can see that darker color. Okay, now we're going to go back to our second color on the second row that we used to fill in our, yellow, our darker yellow. And we are going to use our brush, the monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. 
And we are just going to go through and connect all these letters so that they look like the front yellow color is connected to the back yellow. So anywhere there's a gap like this, we are just going to use our monoline brush at about 20% to fill this in and connect them nicely. So you just kind of want to start on the corner of our lighter yellow color and then connect it to the corner of our darker yellow. When we get to the P, there's like this curve here and you can see that it's kind of, it's not like the smoothest connection, even though you can't see it too, too bad. But I am just going to start kind of in this upper area of the yellow P and kind of make a curved line going down into the darker color and hold it down to make like a nice smooth curve. And that kind of helps um, ease the transition there. So it doesn't make a big difference, but just a little bit. Okay, and now I'm done with the dark yellow, so I am going to switch to this darker orange, the second one on the last row, and we will do that for the next letters. Okay, so that is our last letter there. So I have completed that whole step. So now we can move on. The next thing that we're going to do is add our patterned area on top. We're going to add a layer of our design with our special brush on top of each of these layers. So let's go to our layer menu. Let's first just delete this layer one. We don't need it. And then, so this bottom one is our darker colors. So let's go ahead and find that layer, add a new layer on top of it. Click on this layer and set it to a clipping mask. Click the N on this layer and drag it up to multiply. And then we are going to grab the second color on the top row. 
And we are going to find our special brush. Set it to 100% and just start uh, drawing on your screen and you'll see our pattern appear in a darker color on top of each of our little sections of that backmost color, like so. And then we're just going to do the same thing to our top layer. So find that on the layer menu, add a new layer above it, click on the layer, set it to a clipping mask, click the N and drag it up to multiply. Same brush at 100% and just drag it all the way around to fill in the pattern on top of those letters as well, like so. Okay, and lastly, we're going to add our shadow behind our letters to make them look even more 3D. So to do that, we're going to go to our layer menu, find this bottom most layer with the darker colors where we did all of our connecting. Slide to the left and hit duplicate. Click the one on the bottom. Click on it, set it to alpha lock. Use the same color, the second one on the top row that we have selected and click on this layer and click fill layer. So you'll see it filled in with that kind of yellowish grayish color. Click on it again and turn off alpha lock. And again, click the end on the layer and drag it up to multiply. Now we're going to click the arrow tool and we are going to move it down, this layer down and to the right. Again, you will see it kind of pop out below all of our letters. And you will see these connections again, and we kind of want to line them up so that they're just in line with all the other stuff that we did. So they kind of look like they just naturally connect from our original letters, like so. So move them around until you get them in a good spot. And then we're going to go to our wand icon, dodge and blur. And we are going to drag this up to maybe eight to 10%, somewhere in there. To create a nice just kind of wispier shadow layer and then lastly we are going to add a little bit of noise on top of this just to give it some good texture so to do that we're going to go to our layer menu add a layer at the very top of the screen a blank layer click the wand icon and then click noise drag it up to maybe 10% and you can zoom in here and you can see the noise that's added. You can mess with these settings. I usually leave mine on clouds and I usually just increase the scale a little bit so I can just see the whole, see it just a little bit better, like so. So I have mine on clouds with my scale at about 10%, octaves at none, turbulence at 70, and single. And then in order to make it a little bit brighter looking, we are going to go to our layer menu and on this noise layer here, click the N and drag it up to linear burn as the layer style so that it looks a little bit brighter and not so dingy like it was before. So that is the last step of our drawing today. I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it, so go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching!